Hello and welcome back to Attacking Third. We are so pleased to have player interviews to go alongside our team-by-team -team previews. And for now, we have a special interview segment with Lauren Millay, midfielder for Racing Louisville FC. Lauren, it's your first time on Attacking Third, so welcome to the show. How are you doing? I'm great. Thanks so much for having me. I'm excited. Yeah, we're, uh, we're hyped to chat a little bit with you about all things racing Louisville, right? Lots of new faces in there. So we're like, we got to talk to some, we got to talk to somebody who's been there, you know, and like, <laughs> and get, and get, and get the intel. So let, let's jump, let's jump right in. You've officially, like everyone's officially reported to, to preseason. We're going on a couple of weeks here. You've, you've laced up the boots with the rest of the squad. How, how, how are the early days with the team been? It's been great, actually. It's There's been really great vibes all around camp. And honestly, I'm so excited to be back. I think, you know, sometimes it does get a little long at the end of uh, your off season. So I think everybody was really excited to like jump back into everything. But yeah, the energy has been honestly so great. And it's really nice to have a fresh start with Kim. So it's been great. You mentioned the off season, maybe getting a little bit long towards the end of it. Uh, but hopefully you got some time to relax in the yeah. off season, step away. Did you do anything fun during the off season? Um, I did actually, I got engaged. I'm really oh, congrats. <laughs> Very excited. We, we set it up for you. <laughs> <laughs> I know I was like a little home run, <laughs> but, um, yeah. Oh, I, it was really great. We were in Moab and, you know, got to spend time with my family and went to LA for a little bit, but yeah, it was really great. It was, you know, it's always nice to get that time with your family. Cause it does get at times you can't go back and see them. So it was really nice to be with my sisters and my fiance and my, my fam. Oh, I love fiance. that. I have to ask, how did it happen? Right? Yeah, like walk us the, the ring, tell us about the engagement. Yeah, it was, it was honestly, um, pretty funny, but like my whole family there and we went to Dead Horse State Point which is like up in the mount like kind of in the mountains raised up high um and he was like hey I want to take a photo with you and I was like okay whatever so and we had just gotten done like bike riding so mind you I look terrible and it was so cold and I'm like in my hat like so bundled up and he's like my dad takes the photo and like everybody's staring at us and I'm like wow this is kind of weird and he just like turned like I turned around and he was like getting down on one knee and I Aww. literally water works it's so awesome it was like so beautiful too and my grandma was there so it was it was like could not have been more perfect it was awesome it was I really love cool. that I love that for you thank you for sharing that uh with us and, and congratulations uh Thanks. you know in, in terms of you know having being able to have that that those moments right with your family in, in the off season uh, you're maybe sort of on standby right knowing that you're preparing or trying to prepare on your own for something like a preseason and then the the team announces hey we're gonna have a new head coach and this is this is who it is so with the arrival of uh Kim Bjorkergren you know how's uh how's the team adjusting right to to having a new coach uh in in the preseason here yeah I actually think it's been quite smooth I think you know the front office did a great job in, in preparing us for all of this that has come but it, yeah I think it's been I think everybody's just excited and it's a different energy um, you know, I thought we ended the season pretty well with Mario. Um, and then coming in now we have, you know, I think it's just an upward trajectory and I think that's what we're trying to continue on. Um, but yeah, it's been great vibes. Kim's really awesome. He makes me look like I'm actually a foot tall. He is huge. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I'm literally like staring straight up at this guy, but, uh, yeah, he's a really great, great, great guy. Um, very family oriented, which is exactly what racing is about. So yeah, it's been great, honestly. It's good to have that type of coach that is family oriented and wants the team to be like a family um, because it does make you feel like you are at home. But in terms of being on the pitch and, and at training with him, have you gotten a, a sense of his coaching style? I mean, you had two different coaches last year throughout one season and now um, having some time with Kim. Is there a certain vibe you're picking up on on him and, and his coaching style? Yeah, I think he's mentioned it quite a bit that um, we were a bit defensive minded and maybe passive um, in some of our games last year. And I think he really wants to commit numbers forward and be more attacking minded and get more numbers in the box, because I think at times last year we were more counter attack oriented. Right. So it was like less numbers going forward. And I think this year it's more a focus on getting more numbers in the box, more numbers into the attack, just so we can keep it higher up the pitch. Um, so yeah, I think that's been really great, like a pressing mentality, which I'm all about, um, high energy. So I think that that fits really well in with the squad we have, especially us being so young. You know, um, we were so excited to chat with you because we were like, we got to do a preview on racing Louisville. And it's like, they have, you know, approximately 
one season under you know their belt right for, for when it comes to nwsl uh experience but it's essential right i think when it comes to this league like for for you as someone who was with racing last year in 2021 when you look back to like perhaps like that preseason getting started getting you know the first uh, touches in to compare it now with like the start of this preseason in, in 2022 what are maybe some biggest differences between this time last year versus this year I think there's just more of an emphasis on like us enjoying where we're at and like enjoying the football. And I think like, you know, at times last year, I think, and I think over the, you know, over the season, everybody kind of has that. It it becomes a bit of a slog at times. Right. And I think like that's hard to get over that long of a season. Um, But I think he's just really focused on like us enjoying the process and us like really enjoying where we're at in preseason now. And like just getting back to like our roots of like loving the game, you know? Having Kim is a huge adjustment and and a huge advancement for the club, but there's also a lot of other additions coming in. So many draft picks, um, a lot of rookies in with you in this preseason. I mean, the big ones in the first round of the draft pick midfielder, Jalen Howe and Savannah DeMello, as you're training with these young players that are rookies, they've not played a professional season yet. um, What stands out to you about these rookies and maybe in your own game reflective of of playing with first year players? Yeah, I think there's always an adjustment period coming in. Um, They've all done really well, um, but I think it's just the speed of play and like moving the ball quicker. Um, But they've honestly kind of fit in pretty seamlessly and they're really fun to play with. So it's been really interesting, but yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting for me because being 25 in my fourth year in the league, like I'm one of the veteran players on our team, which is like a completely different um, perspective than I've had in the past. Right. So I think like, especially joining the courage as a rookie with all of, it was just much older. So I think it's just a very interesting swap for me that I'm like now in a completely different place than what I was even just last year in terms of leadership responsibility. Yeah. I love that. You know, because in terms of looking at this roster, right. I think that's something that people are going to look at immediately. They're like, wow, look at all these college draft picks or the, you know, the non-roster invitees. Right. But there's other, there there were other additions that were made into, into the roster, like whether for, in terms of experienced players, veteran players of the league and someone like a Jessica McDonald, right. You know, coming into, into the mix. So for you as a, as a midfielder, you know, but even as someone who's entering, you know, the fourth, fifth season in in the league, what are you hoping to learn maybe from someone of that caliber type of player who does have that long history of longevity uh, in the league? Yeah. I mean, I'm pumped to have, I loved playing with Jess and I think she brings so much just in terms of like veteran leadership. And honestly, like I, I love listening to like, uh, like her and Gemma and people that have been around the block, been in the league a long time, just in terms of like life lessons, how to deal with stuff outside right like she has so much wealth like a wealth of knowledge of like how to overcome adversity how to you know and I think those are something some things for me that I'm really like I want to nail that stuff down because I think for me it's like the mental piece and obviously there's a lot of soccer stuff too like they're great players so I think but I think the mental piece for me is where I really want to you know continue to talk to them say hey how'd you deal with this or like hey how'd you go, go forward in this right so I think having that on our side is it speaks for itself <laughs> Being able to grow your game on the mental side and, and the communication side by leaning on those veterans, that's so huge. Um, you mentioned it earlier that that coach is looking to be a little bit more offensive minded, a little bit more in that attacking presence for you as a midfielder. Uh, when you think of that and try to switch your mindset to be a little bit more attacking minded, uh, take a little bit more risks in the final third of the field. What are some areas of your game that you're hoping to develop this season in terms of attacking? Yeah, I think playing through the lines, um, getting on the half turn, Um, just like playing quickly as I'm turning to like play forward. Um, And I think taking more shots, I think that's something we talked about too, is like, we just have, we're not taking enough shots. Right. So last year our percentage was super low. So it's just like taking risks in general. Like if you're in a a good area and you have an open window, like take a shot, you know, I think that those are some things that we can continue as a whole to grow on. You know, ahead of the the preseason, ahead of getting into the mix with with everyone and working on things that that you need to grow on, um, there was uh, the announcement of a newly ratified CBA, and something that we've been trying to do here on Attacking Third is is take the opportunity to to celebrate that, right? Because it's a big historic achievement, and it's something that that should be uh, celebrated. And uh, we just wanted to maybe you know get your thoughts on you know the fact that this was something that finally got 
done, you know, in time ahead of preseason and uh, perhaps uh, maybe uh, what are your uh, perspectives of uh, something like that finally coming into play and, and being in place for, for players moving forward? Yeah, I mean, I think it starts with like, you know, just as the, all of them that have come before us, right? Like the multiple, le- like, you know, I'm so appreciative of what they have done so that I have had better. And I think it's the same thing across the board for all of us. We want to make sure that we're leaving this league in a better place than when we found it. And I think like, you know, Addie Merrick has been incredible for us as a player rep. Um, you know, all of the people that have been on the calls, like I commend them because it has obviously has been so much work. Um, but I think we're all so supportive of it because we know how important it is to move this kind of stuff across the line because women's sports are growing and it's so important for us to have that security in place. You know, someone who's, uh, you know, like you mentioned, has, has had a, a few years in this league under your belt. Uh, already, you know, looking at some of those, those points that came out with the CBA is like the players association was putting everything out there was very, very exciting in in the, in the evening before, but we can almost sort of see like that there's a ton of stuff within uh, those bullet points, right. That uh, clearly, uh, you know, connect with players, direct experiences, right. Within the league. Is, is there anything in, in particular in terms of some of the wins that came out of these bullet points that resonated with you on a, on a personal level? Honestly, all like I mean, so, right? like, all of it. You're just kind of like it's literally so much of that stuff is incredible. Like even just like the maternity leave when people get cut that they get, you know, or they get waived, they get severance. Like there's so much stuff in there that I'm like so grateful for. It's just like there's so much more security as an athlete, and like you know, I mean, I got we have families, right? So I think it's yeah. just like there's so much more to that. Like yes, we're athletes, but we also have like things outside of that right so I think so much of it has just been like honestly a weight I'm sure everyone I don't know I can't speak for everyone but I I would think that people have felt a little bit of a weight come off their shoulders of like wow I can breathe a little bit more you know yeah for sure you mentioned all of the young players in the league and hopefully you can pass a little bit of knowledge down as being like almost the, the middleman because you are a veteran in your fourth year but there are older players and and more veteran players than you for example, Jess McDonald, but there are so many rookies. Um, When you look at all of these younger players that are coming into racing Louisville, what's one piece of advice that your four-year veteran self would give to these first-year players? Um, I would say like, you got to have the quickest, like you got to forget stuff really fast. So like a very (laughs) shaky memory, because I think stuff comes at you so hard and so fast that like, if you're dwelling on things, like some negative things, like it just bogs you down. Um, so for me, it's been like, how quick can I forget a mistake or how quick can I move on from certain things? Cause like, if I dwell too long, like I bring it home with me and camp camps, my fiance, he's like, what, (laughs) like, can you talk about anything else, but soccer (laughs) fine. Um, but yeah, I think stuff like that, like even just finding stuff outside of soccer that brings you joy, like walking, I have two dogs taking dogs on a walk. So just like kind of compartmentalizing and like moving off, like on the pitch and off the pitch is for me, it was like the, the biggest thing. <laughs> I love that. Uh, you know, when we've been um, chatting with players uh, for our other, some of our other previews that have, have gone out already, there's been the, a little bit of a, of a thread in terms of uh, talking about getting back into things, things like, Oh, we're getting back into routine, establishing rhythm, right? That's like the common thread that that comes up. So something that we've yeah. been doing to sort of close out uh, the interviews. We like to have a little bit of fun, you know, sometimes at the end um, is we've been talking, it's a little bit of a two-parter. So for uh, everyone who's been joining us, we've been asking like, A, are you a coffee drinker? And B, if so, uh, or if, or something else, is there something that's part of your, you know, pre or post training, you know, game day, whatever, go-to beverage that you just need to hit up immediately? Okay, so this is different for me because I drink tea in the mornings. Like I'm very big on tea, which is like English breakfast with like a little bit of milk. And I'm like very, I don't drink coffee in the morning like at all. But then when I get from training, I have to have like a vanilla latte with oat milk, half sweet, half sweet, half sweet. I love that. I love that. There's like a, gosh, this is probably the most like routine, like rhythm routine. Yes, type this of is the English. most like decisive. Like I have yes. to have this. It's English <laughs> breakfast tea with a little bit of milk, like, and yes. then the half sweetness uh, latte. I no, love that. I, I love that. So I many love other people are like wishy washy with their drinks, and you are very to the point. I like it. You yeah. know what you want. Oh. We literally, we live like two blocks from a coffee shop and I have to like hide my money from myself <laughs> so that I don't spend <laughs> on coffee. I'm like, where's my money? 
<laughs> oh my god i love that I love, so tea so i like that we, we're going with tea and we're going with coffee that's a delight I, I love to hear that i'm always a big fan i'm like when someone hits us with the actually i don't really like coffee i am i appreciate it so much i, I love yeah, i'm good. a big fan of tea myself so i'm always like yes i love i love when that energy comes onto the podcast but this was a uh, delightful thank you so much for joining us we always like to thank our uh, listeners for for joining along with us as well. So thanks everybody for uh, tagging along with our Racing Louisville preview. Thank you again, Lauren, for joining us. Good luck in the 2022 season. Everybody, you can follow us on Twitter at Attacking Third. We're on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, anywhere you listen to your podcast shows. You can leave us a five-star review on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. We're also available as video. Subscribe at youtube.com slash Attacking Third. And we'll be back with more ahead of the 2022 NWL season for Sandra Herrera, Lisa Roman, and Lauren Millet. This was Attacking Third.